in here. Now there's different rules for generally accepted accounting principles on how you account for an investment, if it's gonna be short-term or mid or long-term. I'm not gonna get into details with that. I'm just gonna give kind of the over the overview concepts here. So we, that's when we would have our short-term investment uh, on the books, because now I'm still gonna use that cash in the future fairly soon, you would think, and then buy property, plant, and equipment with it. Now, if this was your personal books or you had a business that, if you, obviously if you had a business that was in business for financial uh, uh, investments, investments in stocks and bonds, then you, you, you would be tracking investments in stocks and bonds in order to generate revenue from the stocks and bonds. But our business is not that, it's, it's a guitar shop like most businesses aren't investment businesses, right? Now on your personal side of things, you can also use QuickBooks for your personal investments. And in that case, you would be tracking, of course, your stocks and your bond accounts in, in QuickBooks. And it works quite well to do that. The goal is just different for your personal for, than from the business. On the business, you're trying to use your assets to generate revenue in the future. That's, you're trying to get a return on your assets from the business. On the personal side of things, your overarching goal is to live well or something like that, right? So, cause, you, cause you're gonna have expenses for vacations and stuff that have nothing to do with generating revenue. So it's a dip, but the double entry accounting system works in a similar fashion. So, so that means then the question is, well, if I have the short term investments on the books, how am I going to break them out? Let's first just do a quick look. If it was a personal thing, if it was on the personal side of things, you might want to group your short term investment accounts into say your financial institutions like a Vanguard versus an E-Trade versus your bank or whatever. If you have multiple places versus your 401k in your business or that you're employed at or something like that. And then you can adjust these periodically when you get the statements, which might be at the end of the month or year, uh, instead of trying to put every individual stock that you hold or even every individual mutual fund in here because you're gonna to get too much detail in QuickBooks. Remember that QuickBooks is not here to track the day-to-day -day transactions of your investments. There's other software that can do that. Oftentimes the websites themselves are the place to kind of track that day-to-day -day activity if you're trying to make, make quick changes in terms of your stock positions on a day-to-day -day trading basis. But you wanna be careful with that too as well. Uh, and you have other software like a personal capital, I think is one and Quicken, I think is another that can give you the ending balances, your balance sheets information from the financial institutions, you know, as, as the, the market changes, but QuickBooks is not designed to do that. You could link to the banks and link to financial institutions, but QuickBooks doesn't want to give us the ending balance on the balance sheet. They want to give us the activity so that we can create not only the balance sheet, but also the income statement. So the point is, you can, it's, it's kind of cheating to just take the ending balance. And it's not just cheating. It's not going to help you out from a bookkeeping standpoint, although it'll give you a nice snapshot of where you stand. So you might use these different softwares in alignment. You might have a QuickBooks. You might have a personal capital that can help you to, to see where you stand in a snapshot kind of format. So, and also then you might wanna break out your, your investments that are in, that are in uh, not under the umbrella of an IRA or retirement account in short term. And then you might put long-term assets as those that are under the umbrella of a 401k or an IRA or a 403b, those that you can't get into very easily so that you can see your liquid cash versus the cash that you can't really reach. So those are some concepts on the personal side on the business side, we have similar kind of things. If I put if I put the short-term investments on the books, again, I'm probably gonna try to put it in here at one lump sum investment in whatever the financial institution I have it in might have actually multiple investments, meaning I might be in a mutual fund with multiple investments or I might have multiple mutual funds. So I could break it out stocks versus bonds or just have one lump sum uh, here that I change periodically. Then, I'm going to get interest or dividends on the investments. If that interest and dividends goes directly into my checking account, then I'm going to see them coming through the bank feeds and I might record them just simply with the bank feeds as they hit the checking account to income. So that means I would have income and I've, I could go over here 
and I could I could then just have them uh, increase income. Now, normally, if I was to increase income from an investments, then I would put it down at the bottom, not in income up top, because it's not part of my normal operations. This business isn't there to generate interest and dividend income. But if we get dividend in interest income, that would be great. I'm going to reflect it at the bottom just to show my my net income before this other investment income would be the general idea. Now, it's also possible for you to roll over your dividend income and in, invest it back in, which you would like to then make a journal entry once in a while to put it back into uh, back into your investment in that case. So you'd have to record the the dividend and interest and then increase your investment account meaning it would be a journal entry in essence increasing the investment the amount that you're investing the other side going to <clears throat> dividend and interest income now the other issue we have is that the investment account could go up or down in value due to the market not due to dividends and interest so it's just going to go up and down in value the stock price for example now now if we took the cost like usually when that when we think about like a building down here for fixed assets when a building goes up and down, generally accepted accounting principles in the United States usually says, well, we're not going to go with the fluctuations of the increases and decreases in the market value of the building in part because we don't know what the market value is, right? There's other arguments than that, but a building is unique. Until you sell it, you don't really know what the cost is and people can manipulate the value of their books by having higher or lower appraisals on a building. But if you're talking about stocks and bonds that are publicly traded on a public exchange, then you can still have an argument that the fluctuations are not you know, valid or whatever, because you haven't realized them. However, you, you, you pretty well know what the value of your stock is because other stocks are trading for that same amount. Therefore, there's a good argument to, to record your stocks and bonds if they're trading on a market at market value. So that, but then the question is logistically, how do I do that? If I get a, if I get a report saying that my stocks went up, let's say by, by $500 or something like that, then how am I going to record that? I can increase this account by $500 or possibly I make another sub account, which shows the unrealized gain of $500. So I try to track it separately under the parent sub account, another method you can use. And the other side, the two methods you could use is you could put the other side to equity, the argument being that you haven't yet realized it. So I'm just going to have the other side go to equity and not hit the income statement. But that's confusing to most people. So most people I would suggest then are going to report it on the income statement, not as income again, but down here at as other income down at the bottom and just call it unrealized gains or losses. So those are the those are the kind of the issues just want to touch on them